Hi, I shall present uh, my design solution for the cultural museum which will be based at Harder House Island. Uh, to begin with, uh, I would like to illustrate uh, the location of the museum on the site as well as the surrounding buildings around it along with the proposed main visitor route which is displayed on this master plan. Uh, so, as you can see, the main areas and buildings have been marked. The red dashed line represents the route that the visitors will follow. Number one is where the visitors will arrive and park their vehicles, followed by two, which is the ticket office. Uh, the tickets will be purchased here and then visitors will make, make their way around to the museum itself, which is labelled as number three. And this is the squ little square here, if I zoom in, is where the proposed museum will be located. Number four is uh, eventually once the tour is over in the museum, visitors can make their way around to the Hado House and tours will take place over here. And further information regarding site analysis and history can be found in the technical booklet which is provided on pages 3 to 8. To the bottom of the master plan, here I have for you an external visualization illustrating how the proposed museum will look once it's constructed. Now we move on to the floor plans. The first plan uh, view illustrates the ground floor of the proposed museum along with the existing courtyard of the south wing in scale of 1 to 200. The ground floor, if I just zoom in to it, it clearly identifies each space of the floor, uh, the layout of the primary structure columns as well which are listed in this grid of A, B, C, D, E and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The toilet facilities will be located behind the reception area, including a service room, which will have uh, all the ventilation system, etc., which can be easily accessed if it needs maintenance from the entrance, instead of having to walk through the whole museum. The exhibition area itself is a dark space consisting of a couple wall spotlights where required. The total area of the exhibition space is 125 meters squared. There will also be on the ground floor a 15.2 meters squared easy access storage area provided along with a 15.2 meters squared private exhibition area. We then have a glazed extension which will be connected to the existing courtyard wall. The extension itself is 36 meters squared and will accommodate five sound booths, which again a design has been put forward and is in the technical booklet for you to have a look. There will also be a sitting area provided for any visitors. Access to the first floor will be provided using stairs and a hydraulic elevator which will once again be big enough to transport any exhibition to the top floor where, as I will explain later on, is another storage area. Now we move on to the first floor. This is an illustration of the first floor of the museum along with the ground floor of the south wing. Now if I zoom into the first floor, it offers an open plan shop which is 47 meters squared and this will encourage visitors to purchase any gifts etc as it's to the exit. We then have a cafe which is 32 meters squared and offers a nice view out towards the garden. Along with that, there is a sitting area as well on the top floor with a view and it's 19 meters squared. We also have a 62 meter squared classroom 
which can be used for staff meetings, holding learning sessions, etc. as required. A staff room with a staff toilet will also take place wow. along with a management office at the back of the staff room. As I explained earlier, there is also a storage 16.4 meters squared on the top floor that can be used for storage supplies and new paperwork or again exhibition that needs to be stored along with a temperature controlled storage at the back of the storage. When designing, care has been taken to try and put the services to the one side of the building where possible. Now I shall present to you the four elevations. If I just scroll down. The elevations are in 1 to 200 scale and we have the north elevation, east elevation, south and west. South and east elevation have a nice background to it as that's what you would normally see if you stand outside. Whereas the north and west are tightly covered by either the courtyard wall or just the harder house itself. So it's really tight space here, and you wouldn't see any background. Now moving on to the more technical side. If I just zoom out. On, on the left, we have a 1 to 10 scale detail of roof to foundation. If we start off from the roof, The roof fabric consists of a 100mm gutter pipe, an EPDM membrane laid on top, a Kingspan tapered insulation with a slope ranging to 50 to 300mm, then followed by a Protect Fermo breather membrane, an 18mm marine grade plywood, a 150mm timber joists, which will be here. A Kingspan Cool Firm rigid 150mm insulation, which will be in 350mm pieces just between the studs, at the joist, sorry, and followed by an 150mm timber joist, which will be here, and a hundred further 100mm insulation of the same type, Cool Firm rigid, will also be included. Then we move on to the service gap, which will be provided using a 100mm service void timber joist, followed by a vapour barrier from Protect, and to finish off a Jip Rock tapered edge ceiling board for a nice smooth finish. The only parts visible from the structure will be the columns. Moving to the external wall fabric, Siberian large cladding from Trada will be used, followed by once again a protect breather membrane, OSB 18mm structure aboard, 200mm timber studs, Kingsman cool firm. The reason we uh, keep on using cool firm is it's the best performing insulation that could be found. Protect vapor barrier again. 35mm service void battens and a jet rock tapered edge wall board for a nice smooth finish. For the intermediate floor fabric, porcelain floor tiles will be used for a nice finish and it's easy to clean as this is a museum and it will be used a lot. Then plywood floorboards followed by a protect vapor barrier, 150mm timber joist with 100mm rock wall sound insulating slabs fitted and again a service void which is 100mm followed by a vapour barrier and a ceiling board. For the ground floor fabric an external 200mm rendered polystyrene insulation will take place here. Center foundation blocks 
15mm Kingspan insulation to minimize the cold bridging. Porcelain floor tiles again for the ground floor. A vapor barrier, 300mm concrete, 200mm insulation. A membrane and hardcore. The structure uh, columns will be mounted using a knife plate steel connector to the foundation. In the dashed line is an illustration of where the pad foundation will be for the primary structure and that's how the load will be transferred down to the pad foundation. Whereas the secondary structure, the load comes down to the trench foundations. Now on the right, what we've got is our first floor plan and a ground floor plan which have been detailed. This basically illustrates how the walls, external walls and internal walls are put together from a plan view. These can also be viewed in the technical booklet on page 34 and 35 along with smaller scale detailed junctions for better illustration purposes which can be found on pages 37 to 46. I shall present the first floor now. Finally, we move on to the illustration of the erectic primary structure. The structure will be constructed and put together using 250mm by 250mm glue lamp timbers. The design of the structure was taken seriously to use as less steel connections as possible to minimize use of carbon during construction. Therefore, majority of joints are made using timber. A full description and explanation of elements and how the structure is assembled can be found inside the technical booklet provided on pages 22 to 29. So I do encourage you to have a look there. Thank you for listening, thank you for your time.